Recent archaeological finds are a specialty on this channel. When we're not making fantastic discovery-filled videos for you, we're busy scouring the news for the latest and greatest finds from all over the planet. There's always something fabulous to report on, so we'll always be able to package these finds together for you in videos like this. Let's get started. The 2022 Winter Olympics were held in Beijing. Hosting an event of that magnitude necessitates the construction of an Olympic village for athletes, and during the construction of that village, a remarkable discovery was made in Zhangjiakou City in Hebei Province. There, construction workers unearthed what was later confirmed by archaeologists to be a Jin Dynasty summer palace from the early 13th century. It was a find of such magnitude that the Olympic Village had to be relocated so as to not further damage the remains of the palace. Discoveries made among the ruins include priceless ceramics, textiles, and elaborate dragon head sculptures. The foundations of 67 separate buildings have been found at the site, along with 14 roads and the ancient palace walls. This is almost certainly the long-lost Tehe Palace, built for Emperor Wan Yin Jing in the year 1202. If so, it's the first Jin Dynasty palace complex ever to be unearthed. The Olympics are over now, but the work of archaeologists in digging through the remains of the palace and cataloging the various artifacts found here has only just begun. The history of Amorium in Turkey is long and glorious. It was an important city in the kingdom of Phrygia, where it was founded 2300 years ago. By the 5th century, it was one of the most important trading centers in the Byzantine Empire and stayed that way until it was sacked by marauding Arabs in 838. Even after the sacking, the city remained inhabited until the 11th century. There's almost nobody living there now, but in February 2022, Archaeologists found a pair of very rare swords in the city's ruins. One of them was discovered directly beneath an ancient church, and so many have been a votive offering. Weapons of this kind are known as ring pommel swords and were popular between the 11th and 12th centuries. However, the one found beneath the church features a metal cross guard inserted into the end of the handle perpendicular to the blade. It's the only ring pommel sword with this feature ever to be discovered. Swords like this were far more popular in China than they ever were in the Byzantine Empire, but the fact that they've been found here suggests there may have once been a production facility in the area. The most personal discoveries we can make about our ancient ancestors are their bones. Even bones crumble away to nothing if given enough time which makes this 5,000-year-old bone all the more remarkable. It was found in the River Thames in London, England in February 2022. It's a femur bone, part of the upper leg, and was found laying on the rocky riverbed at high tide by a local graphic designer out on a morning row. Simon Hunt, who made the discovery, says the bone is in such good condition that he initially feared that he might have found the remains of someone who'd passed away only recently. He was so concerned that he even called the police, but they sent the femur away for testing and told him it belonged to someone who passed away between 3516 BCE and 3365 BCE. They were alive before the creation of the Pyramids of Giza, or more locally, Stonehenge. It had likely spent thousands of years buried in mud before eventually being disturbed by the tide and coming loose. Simon hopes the British Museum might be interested in it, but for now, it's on a bookshelf in his house. Our next discovery comes from the Croatian island of Var, or to be more precise, from beneath its streets. Archaeologists on the island are currently celebrating the discovery of an intricate and beautiful Roman-era mosaic. They think the geometric mosaic was part of a large Roman villa that once stood there. The mosaic is just two feet below street level, so it's thought to be a near miracle that it hasn't been extensively damaged by water intrusion. The threat of water intrusion is even worse now that the mosaic has been exposed. This part of the island is very close to sea level and flooding is a routine problem. 
Archaeologists and residents both hope that the funding will be provided for a plexiglass cover so the mosaic can be protected from the elements while remaining visible to all who walk down the street. Before that can be done, though, further excavations will have to be carried out. The experts need to know how much of the mosaic is still there beneath the ground before they can work out how to best protect it. We can always rely on Egypt to provide us with a constant stream of archaeological discoveries. And here's a real slam dunk. It's the largest embalming cache ever found in the country, and it's been discovered at Abyssir. Experts from the Czech Institute of Egyptology at Prague's Charles University have been at the site for some time, excavating a 26th dynasty cemetery. But to their immense surprise, they found the tools used to mummify the people buried here, as well as the remains of the people themselves. It seems that after the work was done, the cachette was deposited in a large shaft in the westernmost corner of the cemetery. It's made up of over 350 pottery storage jars containing the residues and remnants of various embalming materials bunched together in 14 distinct clusters. Some of them are puzzling. Archaeologists have found four matching limestone jars bearing inscriptions identifying them as belonging to Wahibre Mary Knife, son of Lady Irtaru. Despite the clear dedication, it doesn't seem that the jars were ever used. Perhaps Wahibre Mary Knife was seriously ill and expected to die, but subsequently recovered. Or perhaps his relatives weren't happy with the quality of the work. Speaking of mummies and mummification, a whole 14 pre-Incan mummies were recently discovered at the archaeological site of Cajamarquilla in Peru, not far from the Peruvian capital city of Lima. The mummies range in age between 800 and 1,000 years. Six of them are children, but the remainder are adults. Only two of the adults are female. It's possible that the remains represent several generations of the same family, but there's a grislier theory. Some of the archaeologists responsible for the find suspect that they might have been sacrificed at the time of the burial of an elite local figure whose tomb was found close to here in 2021. They would have been intended to become the elite figure's servants in the afterlife. However, there's some evidence that contradicts that idea. The mummies were buried with personal goods, including knitting tools, ceramic pots, and calabashes. Sacrificial victims don't tend to be buried with any grave goods at all. So maybe these people escaped that grim fate after all. The pre-Columbian people of the Andes believe that biological death marked the transition of the soul to another world. So fear of death might not have been common. We're heading back to England now, where a team of archaeologists in Gloucester have unearthed a medieval-era tiled floor at a site earmarked for the construction of a new 107 million pound housing and commercial development. This is a discovery from early February 2022, so work on the site is ongoing, but it's thought that the floor dates back to the 13th century. This discovery might settle a long-running debate between local historians. The glazed green and white tiles are probably part of the Cloister of White Friars Carmelite Friary. Historians in Gloucester have always known that the friary existed during medieval times, but have never been 100% sure where it stood. Now it appears they finally have an answer. The lack of information has always been something of an anomaly because the friary stood for more than 300 years and played an important role in the lives of the city's medieval residents, but wasn't even clearly marked on any of the maps of the time. What'll happen to the site now is unknown. The construction work will still go ahead, so in theory, any archeological evidence at the site will be destroyed. It might be best to dig it all up so it can be moved elsewhere and preserved. We imagine that you've all heard of the Terracotta Army in China. What you might not know is that even now, almost 50 years after the original discovery of the Terracotta Army, more of its members are still being discovered. The discovery of a further 20 members of the army was confirmed by archaeologists in China on February 11, 2022. Like all the others, they were found together in a pit close to the suspected tomb of Xin Xiaohangdi, the first emperor of China. 
He died in the year 210 BCE and was honored with the greatest and most elaborate tomb construction in human history. As of 2022, over 2,000 members of the Terracotta Army have been unearthed, but experts at the site suspect that there might still be a further 8,000 waiting to be discovered. This latest set of 20 is mostly made up of infantry, some of whom are accompanied by chariots, although there are also a few generals among the set. They're easy to identify because of their headgear, which marks them out as superior to the rank-and-file soldiers. The remains of the emperor are yet to be found, but we'll get there eventually. Speaking of monuments to great rulers, here's a 4,200-year-old funerary temple that was recently found within the Saqqara necropolis in Egypt. When the necropolis was created, it was a part of Memphis, which was the capital of ancient Egypt long before Cairo. The entire area is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and includes the Pyramid of Dasser. The funerary temple is also a tomb and was found directly opposite the Pyramid of King Teti. Carved into an internal wall of the temple is the name Queen Niet. It's likely that she was the wife of King Teti, which would explain the positioning of her funerary temple. It's also likely that a small pyramid nearby that was erected at about the same time was probably also dedicated to her memory. Despite the obvious social status of this queen and the effort that went into commemorating her, there's no other record of her in Egyptian history. The life and accomplishments of King Teddy are well documented, but his queen doesn't even get so much as a mention in the history books. Perhaps the planned full excavation and study of her funerary temple will tell us more about her. If you're familiar with the school of Jewish mysticism known as the Kabbalah, you'll probably also be familiar with the name Rabbi Yitzhak Luria, also known as the Arizal, the Ari, and the Holy Ari. The 16th century figure is thought of as the founder of modern Kabbalah. In February 2022, some of his personal correspondence was found inside an antique book in the National Library of Israel. It's a letter to the Arizal rather than from him and was written by a man named David who hoped to receive support for a planned fundraising event. Kabbalists are delighted with the discovery because it's one of the oldest artifacts ever found that supports the Arizal's existence, activities, and supposed standing in the religious community. None of the manuscripts that he supposedly wrote has survived to the present day, and almost everything we know about him comes from the records of the students he taught at Safed. It was Rabbi Haim Vital who spread Arizal's name across the Middle East, not the Arizal himself. The fact that someone saw him as a figure worth writing to in the hope of receiving financial backing suggests that at least some of the stories connected with his life might be true. Back in the UK, an amazing discovery was made in Poulton, Cheshire when archaeologists went digging through a pile of ancient trash. To their amazement, the enormous piles of junk turned out to be all that remains of an Iron Age village. The dozen or so Celtic Iron Age roundhouses that used to exist here have long since disappeared. But the deep ditches that were dug around them to dispose of daily trash survived thanks to the clay soil that preserved their contents. The village once stood on the banks of the River Dee in the area that's now a farmer's field. Items pulled from the ditch include a decorated antler toggle thrown away by its owner approximately 3,000 years ago. There are over 5,000 individual artifacts in the ditches, so processing them all is a job that's going to take a lot of time. Already though, the team at the site has found broken pottery containers that were used to transport salt and meat. They think the village might have been a trade center, making use of the river to transport goods to and from the settlements around them. Other surprising discoveries include stone anvils and molds, which indicate that the people who lived here smelted copper and iron. Most of the ancient Roman figurines that have survived to the present day are made from stone, but there are rare exceptions. One of those rare exceptions is this wooden figure, which was found by archaeologists in Buckinghamshire, England, who were working through ground that's been earmarked for the construction of a new railway. 
It's the first discovery of its kind for more than a century and has survived only because it was buried in a waterlogged ditch. It's badly decayed, but it's still identifiable as a figurine of a human wearing a knee-length tunic. Experts are split over whether or not that figure's wearing a hat. It's just over two feet tall, but would have been taller before it lost its lower legs. The purpose of the figurine is unknown, so archaeologists have speculated that it may have been thrown into the ditch as an offering to the gods. However, that's a standard explanation used by archaeologists all the time when they don't have a better explanation, so we probably shouldn't put too much stock in it. The figurine is the first significant find at the site, but its presence suggests that it's worth carrying on with the excavation in the hope of finding more. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.